Hi there, and welcome to Riding the Wheel, the Option Pit Method. Uh, my name is Mark Sebastian. I am the founder of OptionPit.com. Uh, I'd like to remind you that this uh, webinar is for educational purposes only. Nothing should be considered investment advice. Options have risk. Consult your financial professional. So what are you going to learn? Uh, basic structure of a covered call, structure of a cash secured put, how time premium decays, the perfect covered call, the perfect cash secured puts, the five secrets of a great covered call, cash secured put, and then how to trade the income wheel. All right, what is a covered call? A covered call is a combination of a long stock position and a short call. Com combination creates a position that can produce positive cash flow, increase an investor's margin error, and help the investor make sell decisions. So this is you know, an old chart, but you know, this is the same for every trade. All right. A covered call starts with a long stock position. In this case, I can use Triple M for 98 bucks, 97.29 to be exact. Then, uh, when I sell a call, I get to collect time premium. So I can sell an at-the-money call and I collect a dollar sixty-three. All right. By owning the stock and then selling a call, the combination creates a graph that looks like this. So what I want you to notice is my break-even is now ninety-five sixty-six. Why? Well, uh, that's just ninety-seven twenty-nine minus my buck sixty-three. All right. So we collect a uh, premium on the trade, which lowers our cost basis, all right? Uh, we've limited our upside because if the stock moves above our call strike price, our stock will be called away, all right? And then our break even is now 95.66, but the most we can make on the stock call combo is up to 99.13, all right? And that's, that's pretty simple, right? So calculate my downside, it's literally just 97.29 minus my buck 63. 95.66. Calculate my upside, well, I'm using the 97.5 strike. What's 97.5 plus 166? Or 163, excuse me. Ninety-nine thirteen. There you have it. That's how I got my P&Ls. All right, and you can see it right here. So now the lowdown of this. All right, what is the yield of the trade? So the reason I'm doing this trade is I don't think Triple M is going to go very very far. All right, I don't think anything's going to happen. So my stock price is ninety-seven twenty-nine. My strike price is ninety-seven and a half. My option price is buck sixty-three. So my total return for the one month, all right, is going to be the strike price plus the option price minus the stock price over the stock price, all right. So if everything goes well, all right. So my total return is going to be a dollar eighty four, all right, or one point eight four percent. Generally, when I'm selling covered calls or I'm shorting puts, uh, I'm looking for one percent per month. That's my target in terms of this raw yield. That doesn't mean you always get it, but I want this math to add up to at least 1%. Here's a brief example from a few years back. So you start with Apple stock. All right. It's trading 450 and a half. All right. My exit price is 452. Net gain is a buck and a half. Right, awesome. All right, so now let's walk through these trades. Apple, call, Feb, 450, I collect 13 and a half. I pay 10, 10 and a quarter to get out of it. I made $3.25. All right, so if I just did the stock, I'd have made a buck and a half. All right, now, my... March trade, so I execute this Feb trade at the same time I'm buying the stock. That's wrong right there. 
So my March trade is when Feb rolls off. So I sell a March 460 call at 360 and I pay two cents to close. I collect $13.58. And then my March trade is an April call, the April 445. I collect 1475 Apple rally, so I have to pay 1780 to get it back. So then over that period of time, my entire trade, all right, if I just bought stock, I'd have made a buck fifty. Return of 1.3%, not terrible. But with my call selling, I made $15.28. That's a 13.5% premium. That's not so bad. All right, that's way better. On an annualized basis, that's annualized. Okay? So, plain and simple, if you've got something that's not moving around that much and you like the company, say you like the dividend, an approach like this can really ramp up yield. So now let's talk about the management mechanics. If you do not want to get the call, the stock called away, buy the call back and sell another expiration. All right. If you can buy the call back for a nickel or less, buy it back and sell another expiration. Trust me, these two rules are key, especially the second one. If you can buy a call back that you sold for less than a nickel, really less than a dime, buy it and sell a new one. You will make more doing that than you will pay in commissions by a lot. All right, if the stock runs through the call, all right, you have your options. You can let the stock get called away. You know, consider it an exit price. All right, this is usually what I suggest. Then I take a day or two to think about it. All right. Then um, take a day or two, and then decide to enter the trade again. What you might find is that there's other trades that are better. One, one common mistake people make is they think just because they made money that they did the right thing. In fact, that is the ultimate retail mistake. I see it all the time. Yeah. So it happens. All right. So just make sure that you're doing the right thing. All right. So now what does this trade look like that, that I've got up there? I mean, it looks exactly like a short call or a cover call. And that's because if you compare a, sh a short put and a cover call, they look almost exactly alike. They're the same thing, minus a couple of very small details. All right, the cash secured put. The cash secured put has almost all the same risk characteristics as a covered call. The main difference in terms of risk comes from assignment. All right, now a lot of people worry about assignment too much. All right. Cover call will really only get called away when there is a dividend and the option is in the money. All right, that is when you will get your call, your call taken away. Almost no other periods of time. All right, and that's when the seller has the stock taken away. Now, a cash secure put will get put to the trader, all right? And an assignment to puts is also very rare. And a put will get to put to you when it's deeply in the money, all right? Uh, or an option becomes extremely in the money prior to expiration, all right? And that's when the seller has the stock given to them. So that's the difference. Uh, one, Difference assignment and two, 
uh, when you get assigned on a call, you lose your stock. When you get assigned on a put, you get stock. Now the lowdown. All right, here's the lowdown. The trader is hoping to sell put after put without being assigned, thus building large amounts of yield before taking delivery. All right. In those triple M puts, I was selling an option with 11 days to expire collecting 46 cents. If I never put to and collect 46 bucks every day, every 11 days for a year, all right, not bad. I make $15.26. That's about a 10% yield. It's not terrible. All right, now management mechanics for selling puts. The major difference in mechanics is that a cash secured put should be sold slightly out of the money instead of slightly kind of uh, uh, slightly out of the money below where the underlying is trading, whereas uh, a call is slightly out of the money above where the underlying is trading. If the put can be bought back for less than a nickel, always buy it back and sell another. Guys, ABC. You guys know what ABC stands for? What does ABC stand for? You guys know what ABC stands for? I'll show you. So that is my big tip. You should always be closing. Always be closing. And so a trade's not really a win until you're able to close it. And if you want to avoid big catastrophes, which is another good one, you need to be doing ABC. There's nothing worse than not closing a trade for a nickel and then it ending up burning you. On top of that, and I'm not going to discuss this in this webinar, but um, by not when you don't close options for a nickel, you actually leave more money on the table than you are making out of that nickel by a wide margin. All right. Now, if the stock gets put to you, you have to be, you should be in a in a position to accept the trade. All right. You don't sell puts unless you want the stock. And then be pre prepared for the wheel. And I'm going to discuss this. Duration. All right. When do you sell cover calls? You can do weeklies. You can do monthlies. All right. At 30 days to expiration, at the money options, see a dramatic increase in time decay. Early sales decay slowly. All right. In the final week, the call still has a huge portion of decay to lose. Right? New traders need to think hard about the duration of the call they sell or put they sell. As they become better traders, they may want to adjust the duration of the trade. All right? And so what do I mean by that? Well, you can see this is a chart of time decay. A 30 days to expiration, and at the money option, is seeing an increase in, in decay. At eight days, the, the decay is just huge. All right, so... All right, so between August and SEP and expiration of 2014, there are four weekly contracts. Facebook is trading a little over $73. Don't you wish you bought it then? Would I rather have sold the AUG SEP weekly 74 call four times or the SEP 5 calls once? Well, let's take a look. 
All right, so if I sell the Feb 6 calls right here, so Facebook's trading 76 bucks. I can collect a buck 10 here. Similar one, not the exact same ones, but so I can collect a dollar 10 on these Feb uh, calls. All right. Now, if I get that four times, I make four dollars and forty cents. Or I can sell the re the longer term Febs and get two dollars and thirty five cents. So what's the better trade? Would I rather get 440 or 235? The answer is it depends. That's not as cut and dry as you think. Duration psychology. So you need to, and here's why. You need to know how good your skills are. If you are a, a active trader and you really understand options and you're, a, and you're smart uh, when it comes to this type, then you may want to use weeklies. However, if you're newer, use monthlies. All right? Know who you are. Don't be a hero. All right? And the reason being is that you're collecting a smaller amount every week. So if, if the underlying makes a big move higher and then comes back down, you may get yourself called away or you may have to cover and then for the underlying just to drop back. So that weekly makes a big difference. So now... Let's talk about the perfect covered call. In a perfect world, the underlying stock would creep higher. The trader would be able to consistently sell calls at a higher and higher strike price, helping to build yield. The stock is never called away except for at the top, and the stock pays a dividend. The perfect cash secured put. All right, in a perfect world, the underlying stock would creep lower every month but would not tank. The trader would be able to consistently sell puts at lower and lower strike prices. All right. Helping to build yield. And the stock is never put to the trader except for at the absolute bottom. Now how to sell puts and calls. All right. There's some smart things that can be done to manage the sale of puts and calls. Many involve the volatility of the stock and simple decision making. So now let's talk about it. What type of stock creeps higher? Amazon or Microsoft? All right. Well, Microsoft is not a high flyer. It's generally considered a relatively low volatility stock. Meanwhile, Amazon flips and flops around all the time. It it's really is a high volatility stock sometimes. So you're constantly presented with, do I buy the call back? Do I cover the put back when you trade in a, in a whippy stock, right? Amazon is 850, all right? I sell an 840 put. Well, then it drops 15 bucks. Uh, do I cover? Well, the next day it rallies 10 bucks. Those are the things you don't want to deal with when you're selling puts and calls. Dividends. Stocks that pay dividends typically will have lower movement. Also, they'll have a nice dividend yield that combined with the yield from selling cover calls and puts can produce a nice income stream. Dividends also soften the blow of being put to. Um, and stocks that have dividends tend to increase. That dividend will creep higher. All right, now. Let's talk about the strike. I like to sell a covered call at a strike that produces a net price I would sell a stock at today. So if I buy GE for 2015 and sell a 21 call at 15 cents at 30 days to expiration, I could potentially make a 4.9% takeout yield. So um, if I'm, you know, 21 plus 15 cents is 21.15 minus 2015 is a dollar. Dollar over 2015, there's my takeout yield. All right. Am I happy with the return if the stock gets called away? Do I collect a dividend? Sell a call at a level you do not mind having the stock called away. What you will surprise, be surprised by 
is when you add in that stock premium, that call might be right near the money. All right, I like to sell a cash secured put that where I'd like to own the stock. So if I sell a GE put trading 26 and a half, all right, uh, at a quarter, and I have the stock put to me, I'm buying GE for, you know, maybe a 3% discount. Do I want to own it there? All right, we can look at an example from today on both, both examples. We'll do something I don't own, have positions in. So let's do Intel. All right, pays a dividend, right? Generally low volatility stock. And not getting quote data right now. Let me see what we got here. Can I find what it is? Got to wait for those option prices to come in. All right, well, we'll come back and look at this in a minute. Uh, we'll switch back to Intel. All right. So again, you know, if I sell a put, I want to be in a position to, um, to I want to do it at a level that I want to own the stock. I want to buy the stock. All right, so now let's talk about the five secrets, all right, of covered calls and cash care puts. Now, any, by the way, anybody out there that says, I have a secret to awesome trading, all right, let me tell you something. If I had a secret to make a lot of money, now, if I had a secret to make a ton and a ton of money, all right, do you think I'd be sitting here telling you about it, or do you think I'd just be trading it myself? What do you think, guys? I'd be... I'd be trading it myself. So for instance, I have a hedge fund, all right? Um, do I talk about how I trade? Yes. Do I explicitly walk through what I do? No, never. All right? Now, will I discuss tr trades and that I like and, and in, in an effort to help people think about, um, think about how I try and make money? All right? Well, thank you. All right. So, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I know. I know. Um, but there are no secrets. All right. Now, there are ways to, you know, I can teach you to make money. But there's not a secret to that. There's a methodology. And there's a, a mindset and a, a risk control. And, and, a, and a certain amount of work. Just like I can teach somebody how to program or how to code, but there's nothing easy about it. And, that, and we're going to talk about that. All right. So, the, all right. So let's start. All right. Secret one, only trade in stocks you are confident won't go down. Now, notice I didn't say stocks that will go up. There's a big difference. All right. Um, there's a big difference between stocks that don't drop versus stocks that rally. Stocks that rally tend to also drop. Stocks that don't drop also tend not to move higher too quickly, right? Which is perfect for covered calls and cash secured puts. Secret two: find stocks that are lower volatility. Stocks that have a lower volatility will pay a smaller premium, but are likely not to fall below your break-even point. All right. If it does. It will only do so by a small enough margin that another sale may extend the break even enough that you're not underwater anymore. Now, obviously, th those can change. IBM, for one, took out a lot of people for a long time. You have to be careful about what you're doing. All right. 
Secret three, buy stocks with a nice dividend stream. Stocks that have consistently seen an increase in their dividends, have lower volatilities, tend to not drop, tend to slowly rally, tend to be great for uh, cash secured puts and cover calls. Secret four, only trade in stocks that you want to own and have knowledge of. All right. Even if it looks like a good candidate, if you know nothing about the health care industry, don't trade in UNH or Cardinal Health. All right. And then don't trade, trade cruddy, cruddy, crappy stocks like Groupon. All right. Secret five. If the premium is too cheap, you have to be willing to sell it and say there's no option I want to sell right now. And then think about buying puts and stock instead, believe it or not, or buying calls. All right, it almost never makes sense to sell options that are worth 10 cents or less, no matter the price of the stock. And again, buy those nickels. All right, so now let's talk about the triple income wheel. And this is the best way to use calls and puts in tandem. Uh, to get long exposure to stocks. The wheel is, uh, a, the trader is really using three sources to produce income. Source one, puts. The first roti rotation of the wheel is to start selling puts and you sell the first put that is out of the money. All right. Follow the secrets in selecting a put to sell. All right. Typically, it will be the first one out of the money. Keep selling that put over and over and over again. Build up yield. Sell puts at a lower and lower strike prices. Then hopefully, the stock gets put to the trader near the bottom. All right, so then you take delivery. Source two, dividend. So once you've taken delivery, you have the stock put to you, the trader is able to collect the dividend on that stock. Younger traders should execute a drip to acquire more shares. All right, older people and employees of the actual company. So if you're trading wheels in something you work at, the income from the dividend should go somewhere else. One mistake I see a lot of people make is they're overly concentrated in where they work, which is like doubling down. Source three, sell calls. In addition to collecting the dividend, once the stock is put, uh, once stocks puts the trader, the trader should be sent begin selling calls. Um, when I'm doing a wheel strategy, I'm typically selling uh, a 30 delta call. 30 delta call. Call should be sold at the strike higher than the trader was put to or higher if you can. Hopefully that's at least the 30 delta call. All right, now recall that even if the trader buys and sells the stock at the same strike, you'll make money from the triple income. So if I sell a 50 strike, the underlying drops, and then I sell a 50 strike call, I'll make money from all the, the premium I, I collected. All right, now, once a full rotation of the wheel happens, wait a day or two before selling puts. Examine if there are better stocks to trade. Like a long position, if the trader owns the stock here, she still needs to have a max loss on the position. Don't just let it go to zero. All right. If an assumption changes, stop. IBM used to be a great candidate, but is not now. A lot of people don't like it as a, as a wheel trade. So here's an example in Oracle. All right. This is one I did for the street, uh, street.com. All right. Where I write every now and again. So SEP 19, sell the September expiring the 26.39 put at 22 cents. Stock was put to me. Then I sell the 39 call at 13 cents. I sell the 39 and a half call at 13 cents. I collect a 12 cent dividend. All right. Uh, and then I sell a 39 call at a quarter. Then I sell another 39 call at 24 cents. Stock gets called away. All right. Over that period of time, the stock basically went nowhere. And in that five weeks, I collected $1.09. All right. That's $1.09 over 39 
or about 2.7% annualized, it turns into almost 30% on my wheel. So in summary, high flyers are for premium, are, aren't for premium sales. Turtle stocks are great for covered calls and puts. Learn the secrets, trade the wheel. Speaking of the wheel, we are launching a brand new product here at Option Pay. All right. And it's going to be our weekly wheel course. All right. And here's what you're going to get. All right. Every week I'm going to do, I'm going to start a wheel. All right. All right. On top of that, every week I'm going to put out something educational. All right. You'll get access to uh, a webinar, kind of a members only webinar once a month. We're going to have some other education that we're going to open up to you that's going to be free. And you get access to me and Andrew. You can ask us questions. All right. Uh, this is going to be for the first 200 people that take this offer. This is a brand new product. We're going to do our first trade um, probably tomorrow, maybe Friday, maybe Monday. And you get to try it for 7 bucks. After that, it's $47 a month. You can cancel after the trial. Go to optionp.com or go to H well, here it is right here. Here's the lead page. All right. Here's where you guys can try, try it out. All right, now, any questions? What do you do if the stock goes down below, below the price you bought? Do you still sell covered calls? Um, we have what we, we do have a repair strategy that we'll do. And so, all right, so I'm long a stock and I'm underwater. The trial period is for a month. All right, so let me show you the repair strategy. So here I am, I've got long stock. Oops. All right, well, it's acting a little funky. All right, so here's how I will repair one. All right, so let's say I'm way underwater. Well, what happens if I sell a 36 call against my 100 shares? And then I buy a 37 call. What do I create? A call spread. So now, I'm long Intel. It drops to 35.62. I'm, I'm, I'm underwater. I sell a 36 call. So if Intel rallies between 36 and 37, you know, I'll, I'll, lose, um, I'll lose a little bit. But what happens if Intel runs above, back above 37? What happens? I get the stock back. So that's the repair strategy I'll, I'll use. I'll start selling. If something's really below water, I'll start selling call spreads instead of uh, just calls. All right. Any other questions? You're welcome. All right, if you've got questions, you can email me info at optionpit.com, mark at optionpit.com, or you can call me 888-TRADE-01. Looking forward to starting the, the, uh, the trial. This will also be where the replay of tonight's webinar is going to be located. So if you, if you drop that in, um, I have an older version of this webinar up there, but I'll have uh, I'll have a uh, I'll have something up there. Uh, I'll have this one up there tomorrow. All right. All right. Any other questions? Otherwise, I'll let you guys go.
All right, guys, looking forward to working with you, and uh, hopefully you check out the trial. Have a good night. Uh, can option strategies like butterflies be used for options and futures? Yes, they can. All right, have a good night.